So Rise of Zero Dawn marks Gorillikin's first attempt at a franchise that's basically not called Killzone, and depending on who you ask, that series has had varying levels of degrees of success. So when I found out they were making this game, I was kind of suspect on their ability to create an open world action adventure because it's such a huge departure from the on the rails first person shooter experience. I knew the game would look great, I just wasn't 100% sure how it would play. But after completing the entire campaign and doing all the side quests, I can safely say Horizon Zero Dawn is probably one of the best new IPs that has come out in recent history. But more after this review. So immediately when you boot up the game for the very first time, you're greeted by this gorgeous opening cinematic that really lays the foundation for the entire story extremely well. And you play as Aloy, a young girl in her teens who is basically trying to figure out who she is, her origin story. And you're playing in this beautiful, open, lush, post-apocalyptic world, but instead of the standard zombies that we've become accustomed to these last couple of years, you have mechanical animal-like monsters that you're trying to defend and destroy and try to survive, but at the same time, you're Still fighting humans and you're just basically on a journey to find out who you are and where you came from. So soon after you begin your journey, Aloy discovers that there's probably this overarching evil that is about to attach itself to the world and it's probably something that you need to deal with and you're most likely the only one in the world who can do so. But in typical character fashion of a teenage girl, you kind of don't care. You kind of are just trying to figure out once again who you are, where you came from, and all the other stuff that you encounter is basically just a means of it to an end of your final goal, which suits the character perfectly, in my opinion. But at the same time, the game does not shy away from poking fun at this really massive character flaw of Aloy. It's actually somewhat kind of endearing at the same time. And throughout the entire game, there are a couple plot twists of the story. But for the most part, you can pretty much figure out it and predict what's going to happen at about the quarter mark of the game of what exactly has happened to the world and where everything is leading and where you're probably going to be ending up. So like most scenarios of character development in other games, for Aloy, it's not the destination, but it's rather the journey that you take with her, which really hits home in terms of the story. From being an outcast, pretty much shunned by her people, to basically the savior of the entire world. And it's her empathy, it's her character that grows steadily throughout the entire game. The decisions that you make to help people to go out of your way, to make things right, and basically trying to be the best person that you can be at all odds in this almost impossible world to survive. What really hits home is the voice over work by Ashley Birch, who does a spot on amazing job as the voice actor for Aloy. It's both I don't know how you do it. It's a voice acting job that's at the same time strong, but at the same time very soft, which really ties you into the game because despite there are introductions of other relevant characters, it's really a game about Aloy, her journey. And in order for this game to be successful, her character just had to hit home perfectly. And luckily, Gorilla Games was right on point. No, it's not. You taught me how to track. Wherever you go, I can follow. Not this time. This time. And every time. So a core component in Horizon Zero Dawn's gameplay is the monster hunting. And even though this isn't something that's entirely new, it's definitely the highlight of the game and probably what you're going to enjoy most about it. So throughout your entire time, there are these beautiful, well-designed, mechanical, animal-like creatures scattered throughout the entire world. They come in varying sizes and deadliness and all that kind of stuff. And there are different reasons why you're gonna fight them. Either they're gonna be in your way, it's either gonna be a fetch quest, but but at the same time, you have a variety of different weapons at your disposal on how you want to take them down. You can set traps, you can shoot a bow, you can rope them down and try to slow them down. So basically, the game does a good job of giving you different options of how you want to approach different situations. However, at the same time, after your first couple encounters, although the first encounters of each new monster is memorable, uh, after your first encounter, you pretty much 
gain a pretty good idea of what the best way to tackle each monster is and this makes future encounters pretty much a breeze once you get figured out what each monster's weakness is. By the halfway point in the game where you pretty much have encountered everything that you're going to encounter throughout the rest of your playthrough, the difficulty does take a little bit of a dip because the really only way the game becomes harder is by either throwing more enemies at you on the screen all at once in a smaller area or just constantly throwing waves and waves of enemies at you and by I'd say the three quarter mark of the game Aloy is pretty much overpowered with all the skill stuff that you can do. You can tailor Aloy basically on what you want in terms of her skill tree at the very beginning but by the end you pretty much have access to everything that all her abilities and powers for you and by at this point with all the extra weapons that you're picking up you have pretty much a badass teenage girl who can take on almost anything in the entire world. So I thought this was kind of funny uh, that we are basically viewed at this as a teenage super soldier and I would have liked to see the difficulty ramp up a little bit more by the end of the game. And this especially when you encounter the final boss in the final, final encounter of the game which really doesn't do anything new and kind of just falls flat and I kind of wanted to see them introduce some sort of new mechanic for the final boss but it just didn't happen so I was left basically wanting more for the from the final encounter. In terms of other aspects of gameplay, Horizon Zero Dawn I don't think does anything new that we've never seen before from other franchises, but it just nails it and refines it and makes it almost perfect. So the parkour system and the scaling system from Assassin's Creed does it better. The bow and arrow system from Tomb Raider does it better. The crafting and hunting system from Far Cry it does it better. It just Everything is just done so well, it's so refined and everything in terms of movement, aiming mechanics, everything just feels fluid and natural and it's definitely one of the best games in terms of gameplay that I have played in recent memory. We've taken the wind out of him. He's half done. We're doing it! He's nearly down! Just a little bit more! So when I found out this game was being developed by Guerrilla Games, I knew for a fact that it was going to at least look good. And... <laughs> From the very first moment that you boot up the game for the first time, you are you knew that you were in for something special. And it just, it just kind of took your breath away how good the game looked. It is simply one of the best looking games that I have ever played in my entire lifetime on any platform. And this includes PC as well. And what's important to note here is that it's an open world game and it's seamless pretty much. The only time that I've ever encountered a load screen from my memory is is when I was fast traveling from different areas of the different portions of the map. And the amount of detail, the amount of things on the screen all at once, plants, animals, foliage, water, I have no idea how they did it on a console. It was just a breathtaking experience uh, in terms of a technical aspect the entire way through. And it just, it just makes your eyes bleed when you look at the character detail, the modeling of the armor, the clothing, the the animal design, somehow they managed to make animals which are traditionally mechanical still feel and move lifelike. It was just <laughs> It's a technical marvel. If I was being forced to give you some sort of critique of the game on a technical level, I would mention that the changes in weather are a little bit erratic for the game. I don't know if this was on purpose to signify the instability of the world, but the changes from morning to sunlight to rain, from sunlight back to rain was a little bit off and didn't feel as natural as I would have liked. And as well, there was a bit of texture pop in, mostly usually in environments as you play along, textures would pop in, but sometimes this extended to some faces and facial animations as well, but didn't happen too frequently. And as well, fast traveling, even though the game is fairly seamless, if you are basically just walking or riding a mount throughout the entire time. The entire experience is seamless, but you do get a loading screen if you're trying to fast travel between areas. And the game must have some sort of memory buffer to figure out where Aloy is and most likely where she's gonna fast travel to. If you fast travel between two points that are fairly close together, uh, the loading screen actually isn't that long. However, the loading screen does get a bit excessive if you fast travel from one corner of the map to the other corner of the map, almost. Bloodborne launch day loading screens. 
So throughout my entire lifetime as a gamer, I don't think I have ever encountered a franchise that has nailed it out of the park as well as Horizon Zero Dawn does. Uh, if you think about it, it usually takes a couple games, if not at least one, for a franchise to really get its foothold and get off to a good start. Uh, prime examples of this would be Assassin's Creed, Mass Effect, even the Uncharted series I think needed at least one game to really hit its stride. Um, but Horizon Zero Dawn just hits the floor running. It nails the technical aspect as everyone expected it would. And although in terms of gameplay, the game doesn't introduce anything new of anything that we haven't seen before from other franchises, it just refines them so well and does it better than the franchises that we love and have played for and played with with the last decade. So uh, it's it's an incredible journey in the entire way through and I look forward to hearing more about it in the near future. Alright ladies and gentlemen, that's it for my review of Horizon Zero Dawn. Let me know in the comment box below what you guys thought of my review, things that you agreed with, things that you didn't agree with, uh, things that you would like to have changed, and as well in terms of a video making process, uh, let me know how you thought I made this video. I keep trying to do new things with this review, I haven't really nailed down like a specific formula of how I want to develop them. Uh, always try new things, so let me know in the comment box if there's anything that you would like changed. But other than that, thank you guys for watching, hopefully you guys enjoyed, and as always, have a fast day.